All right, Shalom. First and foremost, as always, before I begin, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us his word and that Ruel, and peace and blessings go to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation during the time of Jacob's trouble, and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in sincerity and in truth. Now what you just heard me say in the beginning of this video, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, are the true names of the Heavenly Father and of His beloved Son in the Paleo-Hebrew, okay? And according to the prophecy, the Heavenly Father stated that in the latter days, He would bring back unto the nation of Israel, consisting of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, all right, the true descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a pure language, we would be calling upon the name of the Heavenly Father in one consent, okay? And that prophecy has taken effect in this generation that we're living in, where the Heavenly Father has stirred up the pure mind of the nation of Israel back via the way of remembrance, okay? Finally, coming back to the understanding that we are the Heavenly Father's chosen people, and that the Heavenly Father, the God found within the Scriptures, pertains to no other nation but unto Israel, okay? And all this is found within the volume of the book as you read, but of course... In order to receive it, not only do you have to be a part of the nation of Israel, but the Heavenly Father must bestow upon you the gift of faith, which is something that the entire nation has not received, okay? The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls God or Jehovah, which the name Yahweh means He is or He to be. Ba Hashem, Ba means in, Ha means the, and Shem means name, in the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, okay? who you see in front of you, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ or Yeshua, which the name Yahawashai means he delivers or the deliverer. Bahashim in the name, Racha means spirit, and Kodash means holy. All right, and this video is brought to you through the Holy Spirit to continue to preach good tidings into our nation, to continue to measure the time diligently in itself, and to marry with the scriptures. I'm sorry, to... um. Look at what's happening within the current events in society and marrying it with the scriptures to edify the hopeful elect and to show you where we're at at prophecy, okay? And as you can see, the whole premise of this video is going to be regarding the whole situation over there in Peru where, um, you know, here it is. They're speaking about, um, let me see here. Like the title of this article says, Giant Green Goblin-like Aliens attack peru claim continues to terrorize villagers okay and this is something that has been um spoken about for a couple days now and a lot of people think it's just a, you know um a bunch of hoax from the government which we know is esau edom who's biblical i'm sorry who today's time calls himself the so-called white man all right but and that's what I thought at first, too, you know, because at the end of the day, we understand that we're living in a time where deception is at an all time high. OK, and pursuant to the book of Genesis, the third chapter, the so-called white people, once again, whose biblical nationality is Edom, descend from that same serpent that was found within the garden, who is more subtile than any other creature under the heavens. OK, so understanding that we should always be on high alert of measuring the matter of fact, um, I'm going to start off with that scripture of measuring the time diligently in itself, man. Okay. Because the scriptures ultimately is the way of how we understand, um, you know, what is a hoax and what is reality. Okay. This is second Ezra chapter nine, verse one. It says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. Okay. And the way of how this is being done is via the World Wide web. Okay. And the measuring uh, utensil that the Heavenly Father has given us is the scriptures, okay? By using the World Wide Web and marrying with what's happening within, you know, these different countries, we're able to measure where we're at at prophecy, okay? And like it's later going to say, And when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made, Okay? And a part of these signs that we're seeing come to pass is um, the tur turmoil and the buildup of World War Three, 
okay? More information, the MLTB being the RFID chip, all right? And many more other uh, prophecies happening, man, okay? On top of that, we're seeing signs of the heavens, which are what? The chair to the Heavenly Father. But just like the world uh, calls them, the UFOs, the UAPs, the flying saucers, you know, green men from Mars, okay? These are all signs that the Heavenly Father gave us that was going to signify, like the second verse said, man, wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made, okay? And this whole situation with Peru can very well be the angels of the Heavenly Father coming down from the heavens and showing themselves to the heathen, man, okay? Just like the beloved uh, elder apostle Tahar had made mention within uh, the video that he made regarding this whole matter, okay? Because this isn't this isn't something new that has happened that hasn't happened, okay? You always had angels showing themselves to the prophets and to other, you know, people that dwelled in the earth, man. Okay, case in point Lot. When he was in Sodom Gomor Sodom and Gomorrah Salakia, and you read Genesis the eighteenth chapter, Genesis the nineteenth chapter, it gives you a brief account of the angels making themselves manifest into people, okay? To the point where they were, you know, performing miracles like blinding the Sodomites when they were trying to, you know, as you read the 19th chapter of Genesis, they were trying to kick boots with the angels, you know. And what ended up happening? The angels showed the, the might and the power of the Heavenly Father by blinding them, okay, in a snap of a finger, man, okay. So this could very well be the angels of the Heavenly Father once again making themselves manifest upon the face of the earth, okay? Which is what these articles, um, I have a couple that I want to bring out. It's going to be, first, matter of fact, I want to start off with this one from um, this one website, HITC. All right, the article is entitled, Face Peelers in Peru Feast on, human, on Humans Claim Amid Alien Rumors is Terrifying, Okay. And now we understand that the angels, the Heavenly Father, don't eat, okay? Why? Because they're celestial entities, okay? Meaning that they don't need a provision of the flesh, okay? People living in a Peru village have claimed alleged encounters with aliens dubbed Los Belacaras, or face peelers, who they fear will feast on humans, okay? Which, like I said, that's, that's not the case, okay? The wild speculations about extraterrestrial activities in the district of Alto Nene in Peru have fueled unconfirmed rumors about alien invasion, and the villagers have also claimed that the armed I'm sorry, that the armored creatures attacked a teen girl. Okay? Now let's go into this. Um you know, there was a link in that article which leads us to another one entitled Armored Aliens Attack Teen Girl. In Peru, claim is met with irrational fear, okay? And I want to elaborate on that part where it says armored, okay? Because when you read the different accounts when the angels made themselves manifest, case in point, Heliodorus, okay? When Heliodorus, uh, matter of fact, uh, let me grab that account in the book of Second Maccabees, the third chapter. Now, when you, uh, you know, for the brothers that aren't in the know of the context of the scripture, I recommend you start from the first verse on down, okay? But just to give you a brief summary of what was happening, um, King Antiochus was, um, his, his military was short of men, okay? And in order to bring forth more troops to the battle, he needed money, okay? So what did he end up doing? He sent one of his, um, I forget the exact term of what this man is entitled, but he sent his man Heliodorus to the temple of the Heavenly Father where the treasury is because he heard that that's where a lot of money was, okay? And the whole point of Heliodorus going over there to Jerusalem was to scavenge and pretty much ransack the temple of the Heavenly Father, okay? But the angels of the Most High didn't take that too lightly to the point where they had to make themselves known and see 
that within Israel is a higher power. Okay, so this is the book of Second Maccabees, chapter three, and I want to start at twenty-two. It says, "They then called upon the Almighty Lord to keep the things committed of trust safe and sure for those that had committed them. Nevertheless, Heliodorus executed that which was decreed." <clears throat> now, as he was uh, twenty-four. Now, as he was there present himself with his guard about the treasury, the Lord of Spirits and the Prince of all power caused a great apparition. Okay? Now, real quick, let's look up the word um apparition. I don't have a I don't have a um Edamon on this phone. So real quick, let's go here and look up the word apparition. Okay. It says supernatural appearance or manifestation. All right. Used in reference to the epiphany, the revealing of the anointed child to the wise men. All right. An appearance also attendance. There's a certain uh, definition up oh, right here under the noun connotation. It says visible state or form figure. All right. Display, pump, the meaning, semblance is recorded from the early 15th century, that of action, of coming into view, okay? And when you read the, uh, the different um, testimonies that the people over there in Peru are giving, it describes nothing but how the angels came down in the scriptures, man, okay? Matter of fact, real quick, I have a, um, should have a tick, yep. This is a TikTok regarding this man, Alfredo, that had an account with the angels, okay? So without further ado, we're going to listen in and, of course, marry you with the scriptures. And that could be the apparitions, okay? And just like it tells in the book of Sirach 39 and 28, the Heavenly Father has created spirits for what? For vengeance, okay? And even when you read about how the angels came upon the face of the earth, okay? Case in point, Tobit. When you read the book of Tobit, you understand that the Heavenly Father sent the angel Raphael down to guide Tobias, okay? But he didn't take the form of this one angelic being. No, he came in the form of a human, okay? A humanoid, like Esau likes to, you know, put them in terms, okay? But just letting you know that, you know, it could very well be people that have that like figure that Esau has given out of men that are green from the head down to the foot, okay? With big heads and big eyes, okay? An apparition. And it lit up his entire garden, and he even detailed that it hurt his eyes to look directly at it. He grabbed his phone and took several photographs, but due to how bright the light was, this entity only showed up. The whole encounter lasted no more than 20 seconds, and after the photographs were taken, Alfredo said that the light vanished from the beam and it left the area. He switched on the light on his phone. Right, man. And when he speaks about how the light was so bright that he couldn't see, that reminded me of uh, the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, okay? When the Heavenly Father made his glory known unto the prophet Isaiah with the chariots, you know, you could only imagine the, you know, that scene, man, okay? And the brightness of how the 
chariots of the Heavenly Father were coming down to the point that Isaiah pretty much just crumbled and was in a repentful and sorrowful state, okay? Which could very well be the same uh, feeling that this man Alfredo had once he was given this apparition, okay? So from there, we're going to keep reading in the book of Maccabees. That was just to give you an illustration of what is happening over there in Peru. And once again, marrying it with the scriptures, man. See, your, um, your Catholic church, your Christian church, these Mormons, these people that worship um, Allah, that are into Islam, they're not, they don't know what's happening, man. Okay? They err and lack understanding of prophecy, okay? And prophecy is what distinguishes who the Heavenly Father is dealing with and who He isn't, okay? So the water Yahweh Bashim Yahushai for giving us brothers that are in the know of what's happening right now. Because if hey, if, if we didn't have this understanding, we would be just like the rest of our people, man. Okay? Following after what Esau has to say, you know? And abhorring what the poor man's got to say. Because the, just like uh, James wrote in the second chapter of his book, in the fifth verse, man. The Heavenly Father has chosen those that are poor in this world, but rich in faith. Okay? Matter of fact, real quick, uh, before I keep reading on, I want to grab that scripture in the book of Sirach. Chapter 13, verse 23. Okay? It says, When a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue. And look what he saith. They extol it to the clouds, okay? And that's the mentality of Jake right now, all right? The prophets of the Heavenly Father, which are the men of Great Millstone, from the apostles to the bishops to the elders of Great Millstone, have been speaking about this whole, um, you know, quote-unquote phenomenon for decades, man, okay? But Jake doesn't want to listen. Why? Because it doesn't... Um, you know, come presentable for the lack of a better term, you know? Jake always wants something that comes to, you know, cater to their emotions, all right? Something that, like I said, yeah, caters to their emotions. That's a good term to put it because at the end of the day, Jake only flocks to people that, you know, have those smooth words, okay? Just like Esau, all right? As soon as Esau speaks about aliens and talking about the real, that's when a nigga wants to believe, man. Okay? But at the end of the day, the water Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Because once again, understanding the prophecies, the Heavenly Father has not given everybody the eyes to see and the ears to hear his mysteries, man. Okay? It says, but if the poor man speak, they say, what fellow is this? You know, meaning who who is this man thinking that he can go into the Bible and talk about aliens are in the scriptures, you know, looking at it sideways. It says, and if you stumble, they will help to overthrow him. All right. And just like the beloved um, high priest, Zaykobet said, man, if a nigga can't get it, we're moving on. Okay. Showing you that this truth ain't meant for everybody, man. This isn't for everybody to get. Only for those that the Heavenly Father has initiated from the beginning to receive it. Okay? So if you have the understanding of what those, um, you know, flying saucers are, which are the chariots of the Heavenly Father, if you have that understanding, uh, just like the beloved um, elder over here in California says, man, Barak Allah. Elder Barak Allah always harps on counting your blessings, man, because at the end of the day, this is a hidden wisdom that not everybody can get, man. Okay? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse, verse, uh, let me start at 13. It says, in the lips of him, I'm sorry, in the lips of him that has understanding wisdom is found, okay? But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding, okay? And that's going to be the end all be all of a lot of our people, all right? Having to taste and feel the rod of the Heavenly Father when all hell breaks out loose, man. Why? Because they have no understanding of prophecy. And they have disannulled what the prophets have got to say, man. Okay? 
So once again, call Allah Yahweh Bashem Yahweh for us brothers that have this understanding and are in the know of what's going on, man. Okay? And like it tells you in the book of um, Philippians, the first chapter, all right? When you read the 28th verse, matter of fact, let me grab that real quick before I uh, jump to the next scripture that I want to grab. And then from there, we'll go back to the, to the article. This is Philippians 1 and 28. It says, And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition. Okay? What's an evident token of perdition, man? The chariot to the Heavenly Father. Okay? But to you, all right, that have um, repented and gone back on good terms with the Heavenly Father and are continuing a cycle of good works, but to you of salvation and that of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Whenever we see those chariots, it's a token that America. All right, a.k.a. known in the scriptures as Babylon the Great or the daughter of Babylon. That's a token of destruction for this place. But for us that are in the know and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth, that's a token of salvation, man. Okay? Just like it tells in Isaiah, uh, what, 31 and 5? As birds flying. All right? Isaiah 26 and 20. Enter thou in into thy chambers. Lord's will, man, we're a part of that allotted number that is going to receive salvation during the time when all hell breaks out loose within the cities of America, as well as throughout the four winds of, uh, of the earth, okay? Let me grab uh, Proverbs chapter 12 and 6. It says, the words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, okay? And that's how I took it when I first... Um, you know, heard about this whole matter in Peru. I thought Esau was just trying to pull a fast one and, you know, throw in that alley oop for the whole Project Black Bean. I'm sorry, not uh, Black Bean, Project Blue Bean, Slakia, where he's in a fake and alien invasion. Because Esau, don't get it twisted, man. He has this technology to the T to the point where he can put holograms of the chariots in the skies, man. Okay? So at the end of the day, it could be, you know, some sort, somewhat of a prelude of what's to come. But at the end of the day, we understand through the scriptures that the Heavenly Father has made himself manifest via the angels in the past. OK, the words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. OK, meaning that we're not going to be moved when we hear these certain situations, you know? Our faith is going to stand firm in Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And just like Apostle Paul had wrote the epistle to Galatia, to not be um, deterred from your faith, you know? If an angel comes down to you and tells you something else of what the prophets have been telling you, you're going to stand firm for the word of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Okay? So let's go back to this um, this article, man. <clears throat> it says, The supposed encounters reported by the villagers are in addition to the long list of unconfirmed claims to support the existence of aliens and alleged UFO sightings that have taken over social media. Okay? So jumping down to the... Um, to the next subtitle, it says, Armed Alien Attacks teen girl in Peru. The claims about aliens are made by the people residing in one of the districts of um, Maynas province in Peru, known as Alto Nane, reports the sun. They reportedly claim that a 15-year-old girl was attacked by one of the monsters that allegedly slashed her neck, okay? The villagers describe the armed aliens to look like predators, about seven feet tall, with large heads and yellow eyes, okay? And like I had made mention, um, you know, the angels of the Heavenly Father, okay? They can take whatever appearance that they please, okay? But um, when I first read this article, it reminded me of, once again, the account that we're reading about, 
in the book of 2 Maccabees, the third chapter. Okay? So let's go back there. 2 Maccabees 3, and we left off at the Salakia. The 24th verse, uh, reading it again from the top. It says, Now as he was there present himself with his guard about the treasury, the Lord of spirits and the prince of all power caused a great apparition so that all that presumed to come in with him were astonished at the power of the heavenly father and fainted and were sore afraid. Okay? The same vibration that Alfredo had when he saw that apparition fall upon him. Okay? Verse 25, for there appeared upon, I'm sorry, for there appeared unto them a horse with a terrible rider upon him and adorned with a very fair covering. And he ran fiercely and smote at Heliodorus with his forefeet. And it seemed that he that sat upon the horse had complete harness of gold. Okay. And just like this article speaking about the quote unquote aliens being armored. Okay. And that's the same, uh, you know, appearance that the angels had with Heliodorus, all right? Having gold armor upon them, man. And when you go into this article, as you can see the title, um, there's another account that speaks about um, what the angels were wearing. I'm sorry, not what they were wearing, but the um the magnitude of power that they show forth to the people. Okay, it says uh, under this subtitle, Peru villagers claim encounters with green goblin like aliens. All right. And reading the third paragraph, it says, I shot one. I shot one of them twice and he wasn't injured. He rose and disappeared. He said before alleging that the so-called extraterrestrials are immune to weapons made by humans. Why? Because those are the angels of the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? And what that reminds me of is that one movie, Black Adam. Okay? When he first came onto the scene and was reborn, and, uh, you know, Edomites were shooting at him with their guns. What do you say? Your magic is weak. Okay? And this is the same fashion that the angels are going to come in. Okay? Of being completely powerful to the point where nobody can do anything about it. Okay? So from there, going back to Maccabees and, you know, putting what we just read in this article together with the scriptures. Okay? It says, verse 26. Moreover, two other young men appeared before him, notable in strength excellent in beauty, and calmly in apparel, okay? And when you read this in different translation, it speaks about the angels being beautiful, okay? And you damn well know that not only were they strength, uh, were they strong, all cut up, but they were probably tall angels too, man, okay? With the good stature on them. It says, who stood by him on either side and scourged him continually and gave him many sore stripes, all right? Meaning that the angels were beating the hell out of Heliodorus, man. Verse 27, And Heliodorus fell suddenly unto the ground, and was compassed with great darkness. But they that were with him took him up and put him into a litter. You know, they had to carry his ass out due to the beating that the angels gave him. Okay? Verse 28, and this is the point. Thus him that lately came with the great train and with all his guard into the said treasury... They carried out, being unable to help himself with his weapons, okay? Just like we read in the article. The weapons that, were, that they were using against the angels of the Heavenly Father didn't phase them whatsoever, okay? And the latter end of the verse says, And manifestly they acknowledged the power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, okay? And that manifestation is starting to make itself, once again, brought back upon the face of the earth, man. Okay? Verse 29. For he, by the hand of the Heavenly Father, was cast down and lay speechless without all hope of life. 
Okay? And that's the point, man. Point blank period, end of discussion. This is the power that's coming back upon the face of the earth. And this is the power that's going to protect and encamp round about the elect of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man. And once again, like I said, Lord's will, we're a part of that number. Because we're coming into some very, um, you know, hard times. Where if we don't have the divine intervention of the Heavenly Father come through, you know, we're, we're through, okay? Putting it to you point blank and no chasing, okay? But we have to have that confidence, all right? Con meeting with, uh, fidence, going back to the word fidelity, going through Jacob's trouble with faith, man, okay? That the Heavenly Father is going to protect us just like he did with our forefathers in their time of distress, okay? Matter of fact, let me grab that scripture in the book of Psalms. In my distress. Matter of fact, there's a couple of scriptures that um, say that. I'm going to grab a couple. Uh, Psalms 18... And six, it says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my power. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears. Okay. Matter of fact, let me keep reading. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. Okay. And when you go into that word hills in the Hebrew, real quick, let's grab the blue letter. We're in the book of Psalms, 18 and 6. It's lucky for 7. <clears throat> it goes back to the Strong's H2022. Har, okay? And when you go to the root word, alright? It goes into mountain. Um... Salaki. I can't find the the definition I'm looking for, but hill and mountain in the scriptures are synonymous for governments, okay? And to give you an example of how that is so is based upon these meetings and these councils that these nations have together, okay? Case in point, in August the 22nd, the BRIC nations are going to have something called a summit, Okay? And what is the summit? Let's look it up. This is just for the sake of edification for brothers that may not know the definition of the word mountain or hill when it comes to the scriptures. Okay. A summit, it says highest point peak. Okay. It's the peak of a mountain. All right. Meaning that the, whenever the scriptures mention about mountain or hill, it's speaking about the governments, okay? And the main government that the scriptures speak about is here in America, all right? So going back with that um, at mind, Psalms 18 and 7. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and a fire out of his mouth devoured, Okay? Now, this isn't speaking about the Heavenly Father coming and just breathing fire out of his mouth. No, man. All right. The way that this is going to happen is through the chariots. OK, and like the world likes to call it, quote unquote, the UFOs or flying saucers. All right. It says coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. Verse 10. And this is the point. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wing, I'm sorry, the wings of the wind. And reading it in the NLT, it says, mounted on a mighty angelic being. He flew soaring on the wings of the wind. And this is the same vibration that the Heavenly Father is coming back. Okay, just like the angels told the disciples in the book of Acts, the first chapter. All right, let's get that next. <coughs> Let me 
Just the lock here. This is Acts chapter 1, verse 10. It says, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. I'm sorry, let me start at 9. Salak you. Verse 9, it says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay? What is that describing, man? Okay? What the world likes to call UFOs. All right. Verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as you went up, behold, two men stood up. I'm sorry. Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahawashai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Okay. So just like Yahweh Shai left the earth via the chariots, he's coming back via the chariots, man. And just like he said in the book of Luke, the 12th chapter, he's coming to send fire. And what will he if it already be kindled? Well, he's going to bring some more fire to the party, man. Okay. And when you hear, you know, these different people from the Navy that are, you know, enlisted to fly those jets like David Fravor. Uh, Ryan Graves and, you know, other people that have accounts of the chariots like Stephen Greer. They show you the power and how omnipotent the chariots of the Heavenly Father are, man. Real quick, I, if I'm not mistaken, I should have a, yep, a YouTube short. And this is David Fravor, Fravor Salakia. Let me get his name right. But listen to what he's got to say. And that's the point, man. All right. So with that, giving all praise, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this word in that Ruel. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. And until next time, Shalom Akim. Shalom.